Hello everyone. Welcome to the session. I hope you are preparing well. In this session, we will be discussing the quant section of the SSE CGLE mock exam. And the code for mock exam is AIMT 2502301. Let us get into the first question. So this is our first question. A plus B plus C is equal to 9 and A cube plus B cube plus C cube is equal to 3 ABC. So it's an algebra question. It's an algebra question. Okay. So here he mentioned that A cube plus B cube plus C cube is equal to 3 ABC. So when A cube plus B cube plus C cube is equal to 3 ABC, there are two possibilities are there. Okay. Either a plus B plus C is equal to 0 or A is equal to B is equal to C. Okay. Either A plus B plus C has to be 0 or A is equal to B is equal to C. But clearly he mentioned that A plus B plus C is equal to 9. Clearly he mentioned that A plus B plus C is equal to 9. So this cannot be possible. Now the only possibility is A equal to B equal to C. So so a plus b plus c is given as 9 that is a plus a plus a is given as 9. So 3a is equal to 9. So what is the value of a? The value of a is given by 3. So the value of a is given by 3. Now what is asking to calculate? He is asking to calculate a to the power of 2023 plus b to the power of 2023 plus c to the power of 2023. So that is nothing but a to the power of 2023, b also a, a to the power of 2023 and c is also a, a to the power of 2023. So it is 3 into a to the power of 2023. That is 3 into, what is the value of a? 3. So 3 to the power of 2023. So your answer is 3 to the power of 2024. Your answer is 3 to the power of 2024. Which option? Option number 3. Hope this is clear for you. Now, let's get into the next question. What is the value of k? If 50 into 4 plus 7k divided by 25 of a, 8 minus 2 into 7 is equal to 6 into 8 minus 7 bar. Now, so this is a simplification question. That's a simplification question. So we use Bodmer's rule to solve this type of questions. So it is 50 into 4 plus 7k. So how can I write this? 50 into 4 plus 7k divided by 25 of 8. So we have to calculate first of. So 25 of 8 that is 200 minus 2 into 7 is equal to 6 into, you have to calculate the thing that is under the bar. So bar 8 minus 7, 8 minus 7. So it is 50 into 4 plus 7k divided by 200 minus 2 into 7 is equal to 6 into 1. So it is 4 plus 7k divided by 4 minus 14 is equal to 6 and 4 plus 7k by 4 is equal to if minus 14 goes that side it becomes plus 14 and it is 20. 4 plus 7k is equal to 80 and from this I can write 7k is equal to 80 minus 4 that is 76. So, k is equal to 76 by 7. That is nothing but 10, 6 by 7. So, which option? Option number 4 is your answer. Okay. Hope this is clear. We will go for the next question. So, this question is from trigonometry. So, we are given with sin square theta plus 2 cos square theta is equal to 3 by 2. So, I can write as sin square theta and 2 cos square theta, I am writing it as 
cos square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 3 by 2. So, sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1 now. So, it is 1 plus cos square theta is equal to 3 by 2. So, cos square theta is equal to 3 by 2 minus 1. So, cos square theta is equal to 1 by 2. So, your cos theta becomes 1 by root 2. So, what could be the value of theta? Theta has to be 45 degrees. Why? Because it has to be in first quadrant, 0 to 90. So, theta is 45 degrees. So, your answer is option number 2. Your answer is option number 2. Hope this is clear. We will go for the next question. Fifty-fourth question. It is from percentages. If the numerator of a fraction is increased by 20% and the denominator of the fraction is decreased by 20%, find the percentage change in the fraction. Okay. Now, let us take the fraction as numerator and denominator, let us take it as 100 and 100, okay. I am taking numerator as 100 and denominator as 100, okay. There is no problem if you, even if you take 100, 200 or 100, 300. For my easy calculation, I am taking numerator as 100 and denominator as 100. Now, what happened to the numerator? Increased by 20 percent, means the new numerator will be 120. And what happened to the denominator? Decreased by 20 percent. Means it has gone to 80. Now let us compare the old fraction and new fraction. Old fraction was 100 by 100 and new fraction was 120 by 100. So let us take the ratio of them. So it is 1 is to 3 by 2. So I can write it as 2 is to 3. So previously it was 2 parts, now it has gone to 3 parts. So there is an increase. So how to calculate percentage increase? Percentage increase is equal to difference in the value by lesser value into 100. So that is difference in the value is 1 part, that is 2 and 3, the difference is 1 part and the lesser value is 2. So, it is 50% increase. So, there is an increase of 50%. Which option? Option number 1 is your answer. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Now, here comes the data interpretation question. Okay. It's a DI question. Prefer it and clearly, it's a pie chart question. Okay. It's a pie chart question. Now, what is the question here? The pie chart given below shows the number of patients in 5 hospitals in degrees. Okay, So, we have the number of patients are 1800 and the pie chart is given with degrees. Okay, Now, if 55% of the patients from hospital B are shifted to hospital A and E. Okay, In E, in terms of degrees, how many are there? Sorry, in B, how many patients are there in terms of degree 80 degrees so 55% of the patients 55% of the patients let us calculate 55% what is 55% 55% is nothing but 50% plus 5% 50 50% 50 is 40 and 5% 5 is 4 why because 100% is 80 means 50% is 40 and 5% 5 is 4 so it is 44 degrees. Okay, 44 degrees were shifted to A and E in equal numbers. So, 44 were shifted to A and E. So, A 22 degrees and E also 24, 22 degrees. Okay, now find the number of patients in C and E together. Okay, C already had 64 degrees and E already had 72 degrees. Okay, C already had 64 degrees and E already had 72 degrees and 
this 22 degrees also got gets added up yes or no so how much how much in c and d together now 64 plus 72 plus 22 so it is 94 plus 64 that is 158 degrees now this degrees we have to convert into number of patients so number of patients is equal to One fifty-eight by three sixty into what are the total patients? Eighteen hundred. So three sixty into five. So it becomes seven ninety. So number of patients in C and E together is how much? Seven ninety. That is option number three. Okay. Hope this is clear for you. We'll go for the next question. Okay. Is a number system question. Number system. Okay, what is the question here? P, Q, R are three positive integers when P, Q, R are divided by 14. Okay, the remainders are 6, 5, and 4. So when P divided by 14, the remainder is given as how much? The remainder is given as 6. Okay. So what could be the least possible value of P? That is 14 plus 6. That is 20. And when Q divided by 14. When Q divided by 14. The remainder is given as 5. The remainder is given as 5. So what could be the least value of Q? That is 19. And R divided, R divided by 14, the remainder is 4. R divided by 14, the remainder is 4. So what could be the least value of R? 18. Now, what is the remainder when PQR divided by 7? PQR divided by 7. Now, so P was 20, right? So when it was divided by 7, what is your remainder? So, 7 twos are 14, the remainder is 6. Okay, so I am writing here remainder, remainder is 6. And Q, 19, when divided by 7, what is the remainder? The remainder is 7 twos 14, so the remainder is 5. What is R? So, R is 18, when you divide with 7, what is your remainder? So, remainder will be 4. Why? Because 7 twos are 14. So, the remainder is 4. Now, P into Q into R. P into Q into R when divided with 7. So, that is 6 into 5 into 4. Divide with 7. That is 120 divided by 7. So, when 120 is divided by 7, what is your remainder? So, See here, when 120, when you divide with 7, 7 is are 119. So, the remainder is 1. So, the remainder is 1. So, when PQR is divided by 7, you will get a remainder as 1. So, your answer is option number 1. Okay. Let's get into the next question. Okay. So, this is an algebra question. Okay, which, so what is given here? x plus 1 by x plus 5 whole square is given as 36. So, I can write x plus 1 by x plus 5. When the square goes on that the other side, it becomes plus or minus square root of 36. So, x plus 1 by x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus square root root of 36 means plus 6 or minus 6 that is x plus 1 by x plus 5 is equal to minus 6. So from this what is x plus 1 by x it will be 1 or x plus 1 by x is equal to minus 11. What is asking to calculate is asking to calculate x square plus 1 by x square. So, to get x square plus 1 by x square, what we do? We square on both sides. That is, 
x plus 1 by x whole square is equal to 1, one square. So this x square plus 1 by x square plus 2 is equal to 1. From this, x square plus 1 by x square is equal to minus 1 or here if you expand x square plus 1 by x square plus 2 is equal to 121. From this, I will get x square plus 1 by x square as 190. So, here from seeing the options, from seeing the answers, we got minus 1 and 190. Okay, we will put minus 1 and minus 19 as the answer. But, wait, there is a thing that was given. Okay, there is a condition that was given. When x is a non-zero real number. So, x is a real number. Yes or no? When x is a real number, sum of the squares of x is real number means 1 by x is also real number. When you square them, you, you cannot get a negative value. When you square them, you cannot get a negative value means this is not possible. Okay. The sum, when you are squaring and adding a two real numbers, you cannot get a real number. So, you, can, you cannot get a minus one. So, minus one possibility is not there. So, option number three cannot be your answer. Only option number two is the answer. So, minus one or minus minus one or one one nine. So, this was given to lure you. So, to tempt you so that by mistake you put option number three is the answer, three as the answer and you lose the mark. So, so please be cautious in these type of questions. Okay. Here, minus one cannot be a possibility. Why? Because the square of a, the sum of the squares of two real numbers cannot give you a negative number. So, option one cannot be your answer. So, definitely option two is your answer. Hope this question is clear. Hope this solution is clear. Let us get into the next question. And it's a trigonometric question. 58. Trigonometric question. So, what we are given with? So, tan A is equal to 1 by 2 and tan B is equal to 1 by 3. So, let's let's construct two triangles with angle A and angle B. So, this is tan A means opposite by adjacent 1 by 2. Here it is 1 by 3. So, this will be square root of 2 square plus 1. This will be square root of 5 and this will be square root of 3 square plus 1. That is square root of 10. What is asking to calculate? Sin of A plus B. What is the formula of sin of A plus B? Sin A cos B plus cos A sin B. So, sin A is how much? 1 by root 5 into cos b is how much 3 by root 10 plus cos a is how much 2 by root 5 into into sin b 3 by root 10 okay my bad it is 1 by root 10 okay so it is 3 by root 50 plus 2 by root 50. So, it is nothing but 5 by root 50. Root 50 is nothing but root of 25 into 2 that is 5 root 2. So, 1 by root 2. 1 by root 2 which option? Option number 4 is the answer. Okay. Let us get into the next question. Okay. This is a geometry question. If the number of diagonals of a of an n-sided regular polygon is 35. So, number of diagonals. What is the formula for number of diagonals? n into n minus 3 by 2. That was given as 35. Then, find the exterior angle of a polygon. So, does n into n minus 3 is equal to 35 into 2. That is 70. So, clearly, n into n minus 3 is, give, is there. And 70, 70 I can write as 10 into 7. So, that is 10 into 10 minus 3. So, n into n minus 3 is equal to 10 into 10 minus 3. So, obviously the value of n has to be 
10 the value the value of n has to be 10 then what is asking find the exterior angle of the polygon so we have n is equal to 10 sides so what is each exterior angle so exterior angle is equal to the formula is 360 by n so it is 360 by 10 so that is 36 your answer is option number 2 ok clear let's get into the next question question number 60 it's a mensuration question to be clear it's a 3d mensuration ok a cone of base radius 5 centimeters and height 12 centimeters it cu is cut into two parts so there is a cone so ok I am drawing here so there is a cone of radius 5 centimeters ok and height 12 centimeters it was cut into two parts ok so if you cut it it will be, like, it'll be getting like this a top, top one it's a smaller cone and bottom one ok it's called as frustum ok it's called as frustum so what is asking to and the height of the smaller cone is 3 centimeters ok the height of the smaller cone is 3 centimeters 3 centimeters ok so this is a radius of the bigger cone and height of the bigger cone and the radius uh, height of the smaller cone is 3 centimeters now what is given then the sum of the surface area of the small cone and the frustum is how much more than the big cone ok now just let us let us shade the surface area of the all the given things ok I am sh shading with green color so this one so this is the surface area of the bigger cone this is the surface area of the bigger cone ok and so this will be same for the smaller cone also this part will be same for the smaller cone also this part also same for the frustum and with blue color I am shading the extra surface area that it got so this is the extra surface area that it got now what is the question the sum of the surface area of the small cone and frustum is how much more than the big surface area of the big cone means the extra part we are getting why because the green color is there in the first cone and the the separated cone yes or no in both the cases the green color was there so he's asking how much more means the extra surface area you got so what is the extra surface area here so the extra surface area so extra surface area we have to calculate that is what we have to calculate extra surface area only this part no so this is nothing but here one one area and here the other area that is pi r square plus pi r square so it is 2 pi r square this is the extra surface area that we need to calculate now so to calculate that extra surface area we need to calculate the radius of this smaller cone now look at the radius of the now what is the relation between the radius of the bigger cone height of the bigger cone and the radius of the smaller cone height of the smaller cone so that is r by r is equal to capital small h by capital h ok so what is the smaller radius that we have to calculate and what is the bigger radius 5 is equal to what is the smaller height 3 centimeters and what is the bigger height 12 so r is equal to 5 by 4 centimeters r is equal to 5 by 4 centimeters substitute here so what is the required area you have to calculate 2 pi r square that is 2 into 22 by 7 into 5 by 4 into 5 by 4 so 2 1s 2 2s and 2 1s 2 11s so 25 into 11 
275 by 7 into 4, 28. So it is 275 by 28 centimeters square. Which option is your answer? Option number 3. Option number 3 is your answer. Okay. Now, hope this is clear for you. Let's get into the next question. Okay, it's a profit and loss question. Profit and loss. An article is sold at a certain price. If it is sold at 80% of the selling price, okay, there will be a profit of 20%. What is a loss percentage if it is sold at 50% of the original price? Okay, let us assume that the cost price is 100 rupees. Let us assume that the cost price is 100 rupees. Okay. It is sold at some per profit percent. I don't know how much it was sold. So there is an actual selling price. Here you will be getting an actual selling price. Okay. Now, if it is sold at 80% of the actual selling price, if it is sold at 80% of the actual selling price, that is 80 by 100 of actual selling price, then there is a profit of 20%. There is a profit of 20%. That is, the selling price has to be 120. So, 2 fours and 2 fives, 4 ones, 4 thirties. So, what is our actual selling price? Actual selling price is 150 rupees. But, he is not asking to calculate that. What is asking? What is the loss percentage if it is sold at 50% of the actual selling price? If I sell at 50% of the actual selling price, means I should sell at 75 rupees and the cost price was 100 rupees and I am selling at 75 rupees. So clearly when you sell at 75 rupees, you will get a loss of 25%. Why? Because cost price was 100 and the selling price is 75. So you are selling at a loss of 25%. So 25% which option? Option number 4. Is that clear? Let's get into the next question. Okay. It's a geometry question. Okay. The following figure shows a circle with center O inscribed in a quadrilateral PQRS. Okay, there is a quadrilateral PQRS you can see in the figure and a circle was inscribed in the PQRS. Okay, which of the following statements is or are true? So, we have to check which statements are true. Okay, now first of all, clearly it is a circle. Clearly it is a circle and these two are tangent. So, clearly it is a circle and these two are tangent. So, So, obviously those, those two tangents are equal and if you draw a line from the radius to this point of contact, this, this line divides them into two equal parts. This, this line divides this into two equal parts. That is, let us assume this is P and this is also P. Similarly, this side you have, this side you have and the other side you have. So, this will be Q, this will be Q and this will be Q and this will be R, this will be R and this is S and this is S. So, from this I can write P plus, so 2P plus 2Q plus 2R plus 2S is equal to 360 degrees. So, it is P plus Q plus R plus S. So, 2 into P plus Q plus R plus S is 360 degrees. From this, I can say that P plus Q plus R plus S is equal to 180 degrees. Now, what is the first thing he is asking to calculate? Check, we have, we have to check whether angle POS plus angle QR is equal to 180 degrees or not. What is angle POS? POS. Okay, so this is P, this is S. So definitely POS will be 
180 minus of P plus S. So P O S is 180 minus of P plus S. Similarly, I will write the remaining values also. S O Q O R. So Q O R. Q O R is nothing but 180 minus of Q plus R. Now we have to check whether angle P O S plus angle Q R is 180 or not. Now add them, add these two. 180 minus P plus S plus 180 minus Q plus R. So it is 360 minus of P plus S plus Q plus R. So what is P plus Q plus R plus S? Okay, I am writing as okay. Q and R. Okay. Q and R. So what is P plus Q plus R plus S? That is 180, no? So it is 360 minus 180. So 180. So the first condition has been proved. Yes or no? The first condition has been proved. Now, let us check the second condition. What is the second condition? Angle POQ plus angle ROS has to be equal to angle QOR and angle POS. Now let us take this. Angle POQ. From this, what is angle POQ? 180 minus of P plus Q. No? 180 minus of P plus Q. And angle ROS. What is angle ROS? ROS. This is ROS. 180 minus of S plus R. No? Sorry, my bad. So, 180 minus of S plus R. So, angle POQ plus angle ROS. So, it is 180 minus of P plus Q plus 180 minus of S plus R. So, it is 180 plus 180. That is 360 minus of P plus Q plus R plus S. So it is 360 minus of. What was P plus Q plus R plus S? Again it was 180. So this is 180 degrees. So angle POQ. Angle POQ plus angle ROS. I got it as 180 degrees. And from the previous question. From the previous statement. Angle POS plus angle QR. Angle POS plus angle QR. Angle POS plus angle QR. That is that is also 180 degrees. So clearly these two are equal. So even the second condition is also satisfied. Okay. Now what is the third condition? OP, OQ, OR and OS. Bisects the angle PQRS. Yes, that is true. Why? Because OP is nothing but it is meeting, P is meeting radius. Yes or no? So this will be, this will be bisecting this one and this one. So definitely this will be bisecting the angle P. Similarly, OQ, it will be bisecting the angle Q. Similarly, R and S will be bisected by this line. So that the statement is correct. Okay, that statement is correct. So option C is also correct. And what is option number D? Option number D, PS plus QR is equal to PQ plus RS. Okay. Oh, okay. I am erasing this part. Okay. Let us assume that. See, since this is a tangent. Okay. A, I am naming this A, B, C, D. Since this is a tangent, these two sides are equal. No? These two sides are equal. A, A. And this will be B, B. Why? Because these two are these two are also tangent to the circle. They are equal. And these two are also tangent to the circle. They are equal. So C, C. And these are also equal. So it is D and it is D. Okay. Now, why? Because a tangent drawn from an external point, if you draw a tangent to two circles, to a circle, so those 
tangents will be equal okay so that is why these two are equal these two are equal these two are equal and these two are equal now what is asking to prove ps plus qr is asking to prove ps plus qr is equal to pq plus rs pq plus rs so what is ps ps is nothing but a plus d and qr what is qr b plus c is equal to pq what is pq you have pq is a plus b and what is rs rs is c plus d so clearly the left hand side is a plus b plus c plus d and the right hand side is a plus b plus c plus d so the fourth condition is also satisfying fourth condition is also satisfying since all the conditions are satisfying your answer is option number 4 since all the conditions are satisfying your answer is option number 4 clear let's get into the next question okay it's a partnership question a and b started a business by investing 15000 and 30000 respectively okay a started a business with 15000 b started a business with 30000 after 3 months a withdrew 5000 so this this investment was there only for 3 months after 3 months he withdrew 5000 means how much money is there only 10000 b withdrew 12000 so after 3 months b withdrew how much 12000 if you subtract 12000 you'll be getting 18000 okay after two more months b left means b were b invested only for extra two months okay two months and c joined with the business c joined the business with 45000 so c joined with 45000 into so he was he joined after how many months first three months over next two months over to total five months over means he joined after five months means he worked only for seven months and what about a first three months and the next nine months okay now so three zeros three zeros three zeros three zeros and three zeros gets cancelled and three ones three threes three ones three six and three fifteens again three gets cancelled Three ones, three fives are, three tens are, and three twos are, three fives are. So it is five plus ten, that is fifteen, and ten plus four, that is fourteen, and thirty-five. So the money has to be divided in what ratio? A is to B is to C. It has to be divided in the ratio fifteen is to fourteen is to thirty-five. It has to be divided in the ratio. Fifteen is to fourteen is to thirty-five. Now, what is given? A gets a salary of three thousand as he is a working partner. Since he is a working partner, A is getting a salary of three thousand. So, what is the salary of A? Salary of A is three thousand into complete for twelve months. That is thirty-six thousand. So salary of A is thirty six thousand. So what is the remaining profit? Remaining profit first from the profit we should pay the salary of A. So remaining profit is one lakh sixty four thousand minus thirty six thousand. So it is one lakh twenty eight thousand. So is asking the C share. So what is the C share of C? The ratio for them is thirty-five. So thirty-five by fifteen plus fourteen, twenty-nine. Twenty-nine plus thirty-five, that is sixty-four. Into one lakh twenty-eight thousand. So sixty-four ones, sixty-four two thousand. So thirty-five into two thousand, that is seventy thousand. So the share of C becomes seventy thousand. Which option? Option number. Two easy answer. Option number two. Clear.
let's get into the next question so it's a di question again and it's a histogram question what is given the following histogram shows the number of vehicles passing at toll gate from 9 am to 12 noon at a toll plaza okay so 9 to 9:30 9:30 to 10 10 to 10:30 the data is given clearly okay so it is time of time slots versus number of vehicles so what is the question find the total income of toll plazas between 10 am to 11:30 am if the ticket cost is 80 rupees first let us check how many how many vehicles were there from 10 to 11:30 am 10 to 11:30 am so 10 to 10 10 30 we have 205 okay 205 plus 1030 to 11 we have 155 so it is 155 plus 11 to 1130 that is 90 so how much 205 plus 155 that is 360 360 plus 90 that is 450 total 450 vehicles were there okay so total 450 vehicles were there and from each vehicle 80 rupees is collected so it is 450 into 8 that is 45 ja 360 so 3 36000 was collected so how much was collected from the total income so it is 36000 your answer is option number 4 okay clear let's get into the next question okay it's a time and distance question a and b start simultaneously from p and q respectively a travel towards q and b travels towards p and they meet after t hours okay now so what is happening is a and b start from two places p and q so from p a is starting from q b is starting after meeting at a particular point so this is a their meeting point after meeting at this point the first person will take how many hours to reach q 9 hours and second person b will take how many hours to reach p 16 hours so there is a concept behind this so after meeting at a particular point the first person takes x hours to reach q the second person will take y hours to reach reach p okay then speed of first person by speed of second person that is speed of a by speed of b is equal to square root of y by x that is square root of 16 by 9 so what is the speed ratio so speed ratio is square root of 16 by 9 that is 4 is to 3 so speed ratio is 4 is to 3 now what is given here the speed of a is 11 km per hour more than speed of b so the what is the difference in the parts so difference in the parts is given as one part one part difference given as how much 11 km per hour so one part is given as 11 km per hour so what is speed of a four parts speed of a is four parts no four parts will be 44 km per hour and speed of b three parts that is 33 km per hour okay now what is asking to calculate that the distance between p and q is 385 km distance between p and q is 385 km okay then they'll meet after t hours okay so a is coming at a speed of 44 km per hour and b is coming at a speed of 33 km per hour what is the relative speed here relative speed since they are moving in opposite direction relative speed is sum of their speeds 44 plus 33 that is 77 km per hour so what is the time taken distance by relative speed that is distance is 385 by what is the relative speed 77 so it is obviously 5 hours Okay, so t is equal to five hours.
t is equal to 5 also. Now what is asking to calculate? So he, that is they are meeting after t r. So t is equal to 5. But what is asking find the value of t minus 2. We want t minus 2. So what is t minus 2? 5 minus 2 that is 3 hours. So 3 hours which option? Option number 4. Okay. Clear? Let's get into the next question. So it's a SICA question, simple interest and compound interest. And to be precise, it's a compound interest question. Sum of 8000 lent on compound interest compounded annually amounts to 12,167 in three years. Then, what is the interest earned in the fourth year? What is the interest earned in the fourth year? That is what is asking to calculate. Okay. What was the principal? 8,000. And what was the amount for three years? 12,167. So, what is the formula for amount? P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of N. So, it is 1 to 167 is equal to 8000 into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of 3. So, 1 to 167 by 8000 is equal to 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of 3. So, if the 3 goes this side, it becomes cubed root. Cubed root of 1 to 167 divided by 8000 is equal to 1 plus R by 100. Okay. Now, so what is the cube root of 1 to 167? It is 27. And what is the cube root of 8000? 20 is equal to 1 plus R by 100. So, it is 27 by 20 minus 1 is equal to R by 100. Oh, my bad. It is not 27. It is 23. Okay. Sorry. It is 23. So, it is 23 minus 20 by 20 is equal to R by 100. So, it is 3 by 20 is equal to R by 100. So, what is the rate of interest? Rate of interest is 15%. Rate of interest is 15%. But you don't have to, the, but he's not asking to calculate rate of interest. What is asking? He's asking to calculate fourth year CI. How can I get this fourth year fourth year CI? You have amount for third year. What is the amount for third year? 12,167. On this charge 15%, that is charge rate of interest on it, you will get fourth year CI. So, fourth year CI is equal to 15% of 12167. How to calculate 15% of 12167? That is 10% plus 5%. So, 10% is nothing but 1216.7. And 5% is nothing but 608.35. So, it is 1216.7 and 602.35. So it is two one eight. Wait, wait, just a minute. Six not eight, right? Six not eight. Okay. So it is five. 0, 5, 2, 8. So it is 1825.05. 1825.05. Which option? Option number 1. Option number 1 is your answer. Okay. Clear? Let's get into the next question. Okay. Another algebra question. So, 16x square plus 0.25 by x square 
is given as 20. So what I do is, I write 16x square as 4x whole square and 0.25x square as 0.5 by x whole square is equal to 20. So here I have a square plus b square. I have a square plus b square. So what I do is, I subtract minus 2ab on both sides. Okay. I subtract minus 2ab on both sides. So it is 4x whole square plus 0.5 by x whole square minus 2 into what is a? 4x into what is b? 0.5 by x is equal to 20 minus 2 into 4x into 0.5 by x. So, this is nothing but left hand side a square plus b square minus 2ab that is a minus b whole square a minus b whole square is equal to 20 minus 6 sorry 20 minus 4 that is 4x minus 0.5 by x whole square is equal to 16. So, from this what can I write 4x minus 0.5 by x is equal to square root of 16 is 4. Now, so I have 4x minus 0.5 by x is equal to 4. Cubing on both sides. So, it is a cube minus b cube. Sorry, a minus b whole cube. That is a cube minus b cube minus 3ab. So, 3ab means 3 into 4x into 0.5 by x. Okay. Okay, it's not visible here. So, what I do is, I'm erasing the top part. I'm erasing this part. Okay. Okay. So, this part also erased. So, it is what I have 4x minus 0.5 by x by 4 is equal to, sorry, by x is equal to 4. Cubing on both sides, that is, cubing on both sides. So, that is a cube minus b cube minus 3ab, that is 4x into 0.5 by x. 3ab into a minus b that is 4x minus 0.5 by x is equal to 4q. Okay. Next. So, this gets cancelled. So, 4x whole cube means it is 64x cube minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 whole cube means 0.125 by x cube minus so 3 into 4 12 12 into 0.5 that is minus 6 into 4x minus 0.5 by x that is nothing but again 4 is equal to what is 4 cube 64 so 64 x cube minus 0.125 by x cube is equal to 64 plus 24 that is 88 so, 88 which option? Option number 4. Okay. Clear? Let's get into the next question. So, another DI question. And that's a bar graph. Another DI question. That's a bar graph. Here, what is asking? The bar graph given below shows that the gross income earned and tax paid by 5 persons in a company. So, Amit, Karan, Lavanya, Nayan and Daksh. So, what is your net income? Gross income minus tax. Okay. So, whose net, net income is maximum? So, among these four people, whose net income is maximum? Okay. Gross income in, is in lakhs and tax is in 10,000. Okay. You have to be very cautious with that. Okay. So, Amit. Amit is 28 lakhs. Sorry.
ओके अमित इज ट्वेंटी एट लैक्स ट्वेंटी एट लैक्स एंड हिस टैक्स इज ट्वेंटी फोर थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एट लैक्स माइनस ट्वेंटी फोर थाउजेंड वेट डोंट कैलकुलेट दिस लेट्स लीव लाइक दिस ओके नेक्स्ट व्हाट अबाउट लावण्या Lavanya is fifty six. Lavanya's gross income is fifty six lakhs. Fifty six lakhs. And her tax is sixty eight thousand. Her tax is sixty eight thousand. And what about Daksh? Dutch income is thirty six lakhs. Dutch income is thirty six lakhs, and his tax is forty two thousand. His tax is forty two thousand, and Karan's income is thirty two lakhs, and his tax is twenty eight thousand. So we have to calculate the net income. No need to subtract this clearly. The income of Lavanya is higher, and her tax is sixty-eight thousand. So definitely, from clear observation, no need to do any calculation. From clear observation, I can say that Lavanya's net income is maximum. Lavanya's net in income is maximum. So your answer is option number two. Is that clear? Now let's get into the next question. In the given figure, I is the incentive. So it's a geometric question. In the given figure, I is the in center and E is the x center of triangle ABC. So I is the in center, okay, and which and it is it was given as one twenty five, okay. So angle BIC is given as one twenty five. So what is the angle BIC? Is not actually angle BIC is equal to ninety plus angle A by two. That was given as one twenty five. So angle A by two is equal to one twenty five minus ninety. That is thirty five. So angle A is equal to seventy degrees. Angle A is equal to seventy degrees. So this angle becomes seventy degrees. And E is the x center. X center means the. It is nothing but this angle and this angle will be equal. And obviously this is an in center. Okay. So this is a external point E is nothing but the point of intersection of exterior angular angular bisector of C and interior angular bisector of B. Okay. So whenever you have like this a triangle, the point of intersection of exterior angular of bisector of this and interior angle bisector of this angle. Okay. This is an interior angle bisector. And this is an exterior angular bisector. So these two are meeting at a point P. Okay, let us assume. Okay, here it is E. So this angle, this angle is always half of this angle. Okay, so angle E, angle E is always half of that is angle E means here angle BEC. Angle BEC is always half of angle BAC. It is half of what is BAC? Seventy degrees. So it is thirty-five degrees. Which option? Option number four is the answer. Is that clear? Okay. Let's get into the next question. Okay. It's a time and work question. A alone can complete a piece of work working eight hours a day in ten days. And B can complete the same work working six hours a day in eight days. In how many days can A and B together, working with their respective number of hours in a day, complete the work? Okay. So A is taking how many days? Ten days of time. And B is taking how many days? Eight days of time. So A and B together, how many days they will take? So A and B together. So it is directly product of the days by sum of the days. 
product is 10 into 8 and what is sum 10 plus 8 so it is 10 into 8 by 18 2 nines 2 fours so that is 40 by 9 40 by 9 days means how many days 4 4 by 9 days 4 4 by 9 days which option option number 4 now you may ask me a question I didn't you why didn't you use 8 hours and 6 hours see here A is working 8 hours a day and B is working 6 hours a day as a result he is taking 10 days of time as a result he is taking 8 days of time but working while working together also they are working for same number of hours no so that same number of hours that 8 hours A is working for 8 hours a day and B is working for 6 hours a day they may work for any amount of a, any hours a day but A is taking 10 days B is taking 8 days that is only required thing for me so total time is a product of product by sum that is 10 into 8 by 10 plus 8 that is 4 4 by 9 days so this 8 hours and 6 hours is just to confuse you so he, the, the paper setter want us to look at that 8 hours and 6 hours to, and he wanted us to waste our time so that is why those time is given that is not required just with 10 days and 8 days you can do your solution and you can get the answer your answer is option number 4 is that clear now let us get into the next question the average of 20 consecutive positive integers which are in descending order so descending order means let us take the first one as a next number will be a minus 1 a minus 2 a minus 3 so on so like that we have 20 numbers so sum of this consecutive 20 numbers so average was given as how much so average was given as 17.5 when the average is 17.5 what is your sum average into n so 17.5 into 20 okay so sum of n terms sum of n terms in the arithmetic progression what is your formula n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d that sum is given as 17.5 into 20 so n is how much 20 by 2 into 2a plus n how many numbers are there 20 numbers so it is 20 minus 1 into what is your common difference it is decreased by 1 no so your common difference will be minus 1 is equal to 17.5 into 20 so 20 20 gets cancelled so 2a plus 19 into minus 1 that is 2a minus 19 is equal to 17.5 into 2. 17.5 into 2 becomes 35. So what is your 2a? 2a is equal to 35 plus 19. 35 plus 19 is how much? It is 54. So what is the value of a? a is equal to 27. Means your first term is 27. What is asking to calculate? He is asking to calculate 14th number. So t14. What is the formula for this? a plus n minus 1 into d. So a plus 13 d. What was a? 27 plus 13 into what was d? Minus 1. So it is 27 minus 13. So what is your 14th term? 14. So 14th term is 14. Which option? Option number 1. Is that clear? Let's get into the next question. A mensuration question now. A solid metallic sphere and a cylinder having the base radii 3 centimeters each are dropped into a rectangular vessel. Okay, so there is a rectangular vessel. Okay, a small metallic sphere and a cylinder is dropped whenever when you whenever you, you drop something in a water definitely the water level rises no so the water level rises means there is a change in the volume that volume is equal to is equal to volume of this cylinder here first it is sphere no so volume of this sphere 
plus volume of the cylinder. So what is the volume of a sphere? 44 into 18 into I'm not take I know I'm not supposed to take this height. Why? Because there is a change in height that you have to calculate. That is h is equal to what is the volume of the sphere? 4 by 3 into pi r cube. 4 by 3 into 22 by 7 into what is the radius of the sphere? It was given as 3. So 4 by 3 pi r cube. So it is 4 by 3 into 22 by 7 into 3 into 3 into 3 plus what is the volume of cylinder? pi r square h. So 22 by 7 into what was the radius? 3 into 3 into what was the height of a cylinder? 10. So from this you have to calculate h. So 22 ones, 22 ones, 22 twos and 3 into 3 9. Again 3 into 3 9. 9 twos are 18. Okay. And 3 ones and 3 ones. So 4 h is equal to 4 by 7 plus 10 by 7. So 4 h is equal to 14 by 7. So h is equal to 1 by 2 centimeters. So 1 by 2 centimeters means 0.5 centimeters. Which option? Option number 1 is the answer. Let us get into the next question please. Another DI question and a pie chart. So the pie chart show, given below shows the data of 2500 villagers who choose different occupations. So there are different occupations it was given. What is the question? The number of villagers who choose software as the occupation is approximately what percent of the number of villagers who choose agriculture. So number of people who choose software. Soft, software is how much percent of the number of agriculture. Okay. So software is how much? 52 percent. And agriculture is how much? 18 percent. Sorry. So agriculture Number of villagers who choose software is how much of agriculture? So S by A into 100. What was S? 52 by what was A? Agriculture was 18 into 100. 2 nines and 226. So it is 2600 by 9. So approximately it will be 250%. Approximately it has to be, sorry, not 250%, it has to be 290%. Let us check. 9 to 18. Okay. 9, 9, 70, 9, 9, 7, 63. No, no, it is. Just a minute. 2600 by 9. So, 9 to 18. So you have to get 9 here. So 9 9 is 81. So approximately it is 290%. Approximately it is 290%. Which option is satisfying? Option number 1 is your answer. Okay. Now let us get into the next question. If A is equal to 60 degrees, find the value of this. Okay. So it's a concept from, it's a question from trigonometry concept. So you have to substitute here root 3 into sin 2a. Sin 2a means sin 60 plus cos 4a that is cos 4 into 60 that is 240 plus cosecant a plus 30. a plus 30 means 60 plus 30 that is 90 plus cot 15 minus a. 15 minus a is cot minus 45. By tan 2a plus 15 that is 2 into 60 120 plus 15 that is 135 plus root 3 into secant a by 2 a was 60 so 60 by 2 that is 30 plus cos 5a so 5 into 60 that is cos 
300. Root 3 into what is sin 60? Root 3 by 2 plus cos 240. Cos 240 means cos 180 plus 60. Cos 180 plus 60 is minus cos 60. Minus cos 60 is how much? Minus 1 by 2 plus cosecant 90 that is 1 and cot of minus 45. Cot of minus 45 is minus cot 45 that is minus 1 divided by tan 135. Tan 135 means tan 180 plus sorry tan 90 plus 45. Tan 90 plus 45 means minus tan 45 that is minus 1 root 3 into secant 60. Cos 60 is is root 3 by 2. So secant 60 is 2 by root 3. Cos 300. Cos 300 means cos 360 minus 60. That is cos 60. That is how much? 1 by 2. So it is 3 by 2. Plus 1 minus 1 gets cancelled. Minus 1 by 2. And minus 1 plus 2 plus 1 by 2. So it is 3 minus 1 by 2 is 2 by 2 and 2 minus 1 by 2. So it is 1 minus 3 by 2 that is equal to 2 by 3. So 2 by 3 which option? Option number 1. Okay. 75th question. The last question. Again it is from a geometry question. Topic. So, in the following figure, ABC is a triangle, D is a midpoint of AC. Okay, so D is a midpoint of AC. The line passing through C bisects, the line passing through C bisects BD, median BD at P. Okay, and meets AB at X. What is the value of XP is to PC? Okay, now, this we will solve from mass point theorem this will solve from mass point theorem okay now according to the mass point theorem first d is a midpoint of ac yes or no so just i'll give you a idea on mass point theorem so what mass point theorem is for example a b c it is like this okay if a is 1 centimeters and b c is 3 centimeters. Let us assume. So to, ba to balance this, what, what I do is, I put a weight of 3 kgs. Okay. Why? Because here it is 3 centimeters. Here it is 3 centimeters. I will put a weight of 3 kgs here. And I will put a weight of 1 kg here. Why? Because it is 1 centimeters. Okay. So, def so what happens? Here 3 kgs and here 1 kg. So at B, you will be, you'll be getting a weight of 4 kg. So, this is called as mass point theorem concept. Okay, this is called as mass point theorem concept. So, based on this, I will solve this question. Okay, I'm erasing this. I'm erasing this. Now, D is a midpoint of AC, no? So, AD is 1 centimeter and DC is also 1, one centimeter. So, as a result, so for, for this 1 centimeter, I'll be, here I will be getting 1 kg of weight. Here I will be getting 1 kg of weight. Because of this 1 centimeter, here I will be getting 1 kg of weight. Okay. Here 1 kg, here 1 kg. So at D, what could be the weight? 2 kgs. Okay. Now, and he, here he mentioned that C bisects BD. Okay. This this is my bisecting BD at P means this these two are also equal. Okay. If here it is 2 kgs, obviously here it has to be 2 kgs. Here it has to be 2 kgs. Why? Because these two are equal. So as a result, what is the weight here? 4 kgs. Why? Because this is 2 kgs, this is 2 kgs. The weight has to be 4 kgs. So here 1 kg, here 4 kgs. So at middle, I am having 4 kg of weight. Already here 1 kg is there. So on x, how many how much kgs it has to be? 3 kgs. Now, so here it is 3 kgs, here it is 1 kg. Since it is it is here 1 kg, 
here it will be 1 centimeter and here it is 3 kgs here it will be 3 centimeters so xp is 1 centimeter and pc is 3 centimeters so clearly xp is to pc how much 1 is to 3 so which option option number 1 is your answer okay is that clear okay i hope you like the session okay thank you have a good day